Hey yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from a happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Monday, July the 18th, 2022 and this is video number 151. So how are you all doing? I hope you're well. It's been two weeks or over two weeks since I have recorded a podcast so I'm a little rusty. I have been away on vacation so my husband two really good friends of ours and myself went and flew down to Orlando, Florida in the United States, boarded a ship and we sailed around the Caribbean for seven days. There were three, three or four ports that we visited and we did a lot of floating in these crystal ocean waters, white sandy beaches. It was amazing. So my brain hasn't really kicked back into regular working mode where I've come back now for a week and I'm kind of walking around a bit in a daze. <laughs> I've been busy like, you know, fixing the house back up because of uh, us not being here for a week and also doing laundry and getting my brain back into the work day when I'm at the office. So I'm going to dedicate a full video later down the way on my trip. I've got some wonderful footage that I want to show and share with you. And also uh, talking about tips about traveling as well, what I brought and what I experienced when I'm flying and I'm crafting. Uh, so that would be my experience from Canada to the States. I'm not sure whether it's all the same kind of restrictions or regulations, but for me, I'll talk to you about that. So that if you're wanting to travel and bring your crafting tools that you have uh, some idea on like what to expect. But the title down below does suggest that I'm going to be talking about some Hobie review items that I was starting on in June of 2022. Now, I want to thank all those wonderful people who commented on my review video that I posted June of maybe three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, I'm not too sure. But I will include the link down below if you're wondering what I'm talking about. I received some free yarn from Hobie and they graciously asked me to review some of their new yarn and I requested some yarn as well that I hadn't used before so I wanted to kind of like you know bag it all in together. Now just a, a little bit of a disclosure here I'm not affiliated with Hobie so any links down below that you're going to click on I'm not going to get any kickback on uh, on money or anything like that. Uh, they just sent me free yarn to talk about and to review. So that's where we stand with, uh, with the relationship with myself and Hobie. So I'm going to be talking about the finished projects as well as one that is still on the go. And it's a little bit of a beast. I'm loving the learn so much with, uh, with that pattern that I'm working on. And I think it's around 27 or 28 pages and I'm halfway so I'm kind of like 14 or 15 and it's a crocheted pattern but let's kick off with the things that I want to talk about that are finished and the first project used to be housed in this wonderful bag here it was handmade by one of my friends Melinda it's professionally lined and has a wonderful sturdy zipper as well to close up I absolutely love this quilted bag. Melinda, thank you so much. Okay, the first project that I'm going to talk about used Hobie's Panettone yarn. And I used two different colorways. One is called brown blue and the other one is called mint green. Now these two balls were 50 grams each and they're a combination of cotton, polyamide and a little bit of metallic so there is a bit of shimmer to it. Quite a novel yarn. I grounded it because it was uh, quite a loud and vivacious yarn. I'm going to say it does has pizzazz. Um, with this yarn here, it's BC Garn, a lino yarn. And I used two 50 gram balls in the colorway 08, which is a gray color. And I worked to a mosaic crochet pattern that is a tutorial on one of my good friend Crystal over at Bag A Day Crochet. 
and she showed how to do the inset crochet stitch here. Um, I will also link down below the tutorial where you can see Crystal work up this pattern. And I used a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, so it was quite a tight stitch. And it does have a nice drape to it, but this yarn, these two yarns together, they're not really super soft. They do have that linen cotton in the BC garn. And because I used such a tight stitch on the um, Panettone, it is quite a, I'm going to say coarser fabric. I haven't washed it yet, so it might soften up a little bit in a rinse and then a lay flat to dry situation. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. So this is how they both worked up together. Absolutely loved it, working on it so much that I, I, I wanted to do a little bit of design work myself in a crochet mosaic uh, patterning using the same amount of stitches going across. So this inset crochet mosaic pattern is d divisible by 10 and then you add three. So I put 40 stitches across and then three. So 43 to get, I'm gonna say that's probably about 12 to 14 inches across. And I worked it up mm, two and a half feet when it lays flat. And I did the other side of this cow was done in a pattern that I put through together and I had so much fun designing it. So this is it here. And this uses the mint green colorway with the BC Garn Grey. Now, I'm still learning how to do mosaic crochet. I've done around three projects in the past, which deals with uh, the, you know, two or more colors in mosaic crochet. And I'm really enjoying it. So I'm having lots of fun with it. Now, this inside, so, I was still learning and Crystal had hers fully reversible. Now I didn't do re uh, mine reversible when I was doing the stitch work here. I don't know why that was the case, but sometimes I had holes like circles and sometimes I had straight flush stripes. So I was like thinking maybe it's because I'm sometimes feeding the the stitch work through to uh, encapsulate the other colors and sometimes I wasn't. So I was learning when I was working up this pattern but then I realized what I was doing wrong and when I got to this doing my own pattern I had figured out how to make it fully reversible. So it was that was my learn in this piece here. So that one is fully reversible. And that was a pattern that I did. It's using the cross motif. And I really enjoyed working that up. I did make lots of mistakes. So I had to pull back a lot. So I rated this, uh, these two yarns as a four out of five for frog friendly. Five being the most friendly to frog. I, it didn't catch up on itself at all. It was really a nice yarn to work with. So, I'll try it on for you. Uh, it doesn't really suit what I'm wearing. But, uh, yeah, that's it there. And I'll talk to you about the process because you might be interested in doing um, your own color pattern work as well. And these tools that I found along the way really helped me out. To start off with the, with the cross motif that I uh, was designing up. I used a gridded page first just to get an idea of what kind of work I wanted to get done. Now I did that a few times until I was happy with what I was doing and then I thought well I want to count the number of stitches across to get myself a grid that will work for all of the 44. That's how much I had to get to to get this. Uh, pattern all the 44 stitches 
and there must have been something online that could help me with the grid design of 44 stitches across and I found a website called stitchfiddle.com and I'll link it down below it's it offers a free profile area where you can use the grids um, to a certain length of, or a certain way and then they offer like a paid for area where you can get more bells and whistles but for me I just wanted to do color work but they do offer things if you're writing up uh, crochet patterns have those little symbols or if you're doing a brioche pattern it has symbols as well for brioche designing and so what it does is it allowed me to write the number of stitches in the grid so 44 across and then the number of stitches for the complete pattern so I could just run up and down this chart and uh, do the pat the length of design as long as I wanted to so I came up with uh, coloring these squares together there's one mistake in here somewhere that I didn't quite fill in hmm I don't know whether it's whether you can see the, the mistake but I don't know where it is either <laughs> but yeah that's the pattern that I used and then I printed it out and I have that now in my my book for the mosaic um yeah so I really had a lot of fun with this uh this yarn I would use the BC garn again for sure I have another four balls in different colors and I will probably do some more mosaic crochet or I might do some more color work so what do you think? I really enjoyed doing that. So I'll put that away here. My next project is using the Glitter Delight, which is the other Hobie yarn that they wanted me to review. And I'm, I housed it in this bag here by Jezebel B. And I call it my saddle bag. It's not officially called that, but that's what I call it. And I really love this bag so much. The balls of yarn that I got for the Glitter Delight look like this. So it's 100 gram balls and this is a combination, I believe, of cotton and cotton, acrylic and polyester. I used three balls for this project. It's a knitted project and it uses the linen stitch. And here it is here. So the balls that I used in the Glitter Delight were two balls in the pastel color rainbow, pastel rainbow colorway, and one ball in the meadow, spring meadow colorway. What I had done was I started off with the pastel rainbow, and then I blended the in the the spring meadow. And then I blended back into another ball of the pastel rainbow. So the ends are kind of like the faded variety. And then the middle section is the intense uh, spring meadow. So this is the stitch work up close. I used an eight millimeter set of chagu needles. It was really nice to work with. Now this yarn is quite delicate and it does shed when you're working with it. I chose a denser stitch so that in the hope that it will, oh, got a message here. A denser stitch so that in the hope that when I wash it and wear it and use it, that it will keep its shape better. I have a feeling that if you were to use a drapier stitch that um, you would wash it and it would come out all warped or you'd need to kind of lay it flat and pin it down in its shape so it, it dried into the proper form again. But um, yeah, this stitch is also reminiscent if you're doing a crochet stitch, also of the linen stitch and, or some people call it the seed stitch in crochet. So I really like the way it faded. I did around 36 to 40 stitches across and it's probably hmm, maybe eight inches and the length of three balls in that stitch is around six, I'm gonna say six feet long. It's longer than my wingspan. 
And the other side of the linen stitch looks very much like a garter stitch. So you get the little pearl bumps. And that's the side again. Don't really get to see the shimmer of the of the glitter in that one very well. But I'll wear it for you and you can see how it wears and drapes. I find that this, the majority of this yarn here is the white base that shows through and it allows the pop of color to come through as well. But I think foremost, the base itself is mostly the white base. Yeah, it has a nice uh, beachy feel. Uh, I think, as I mentioned in my review, it would be good for items that are maybe centerpieces or just key uh, accent pieces that you don't really use much. I couldn't imagine this being something that you would wear uh, in heavy use areas of your body, like if you were making a jumper of it. I think, I don't know how the arms would hold up. Maybe they might lose their shape. If you're kind of bending at the elbows, you might pucker through and get bulges in different places. Uh, but for a scarf, maybe because you don't really kind of, it's not, you're not moving around and you don't have things poking through the fabric. If you have it around your neck, it's pretty much a stable garment, not asking to be robust with the body if that makes any sense. But, you know, maybe accent throws or centerpieces, it might be a good yarn to choose for some sort of uh, accent piece. Yeah, I had fun working with it and I did rate it a four out of five as well for frog friendly. So it didn't catch on itself and it was easy to frog back. The next item that I have I use the Hobie Rainbow Cotton. So the labels look like this. I got them in packs and I was picking out all of the colors for the, the pride flag. And I wanted to do a little pride, a pride project for June. So I knitted up a slip stitch pattern using the six colors of the of the pride flag and it starts with the indigo purple blue green yellow orange and then red and i blended the 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 colors together and gave it maybe about three or four rows of just the color on its own so yeah it worked out 350 stitches on my Chagu 40 inch interchangeables to be, I'm gonna say eight feet long. It was, it's such a stretchy yarn. I used six millimeters and the yarn weight itself is a, I'm gonna say almost between a sport weight and a three weight yarn. It's classified when you look on the Hobie site as a six over eight um, weight classification. And it works up really nicely. I mean, I could wear something out of this. It's quite soft. Uh, I'll drape it around me so you can see the, the extent of <laughs> how elastic it is. So there we go, just put it around. I can wrap it around a few times. And this one has a long sleeve too. Yeah, so that was my little pride project that I that I wore over a couple of my outings that I had to celebrate pride. Absolutely had so much fun with this one. Now, it has a great frog friendly as as well as for um, and I rated it four out of five, and. I did try to crochet with it as well. And I wanted to make, uh, initially I wanted to make the hexagons and I wanted to crochet as you go, like kind of attach the, the crochet hex hexagons together to make 
a scarf, but I changed my mind midway through. But I had one hexagon that I had done and I, it was in this ball here. So I made myself a little stuffed pride creature. I absolutely love him, he's so cute. And I put some buttons for eyes on him and he's really squishy. I used all my end trimmings uh, for probably the last three or four months of projects and I filled him up with all of those end trimmings. So yeah, he's going to sit up here with his other little friends. There you go. And that was my fourth project using the Hobie yarn. Now, the last thing that I want to show is a work in progress, and it is to the pattern that I was telling you that has around 20 something odd pages. Uh, as I reach over here to get it, it is called, the pattern name is called Edlothia, and it's by Morbin Design. I really enjoy Morbin Design. Uh, so that's it there. There are 22 pages, nine sections. I'm on section five, just beginning section five, and I'm up to page nine on the, on the pattern. I'm using the Cotton Kings Sultan Deluxe. That's, that's where I'm, I'm working from the outside going in. And I am probably around, I'm going to say a third of the way through the cake. And each of these cake has 250 grams or approximately a thousand meters. And it gradually gradates. It's really super soft. And it's the type of yarn that is, it's twisted together. So all of the plies are kind of like together. You don't have to use a bead with this one. Uh, the other Sultans, I believe they have other cakes as well in Hobie where you have to, like the strands are loose, but this one is kind of twisted together, which is nice to work with. You go a bit quicker. And here is where I'm at. Da -da -da -da. So I've got four down of the nine and I'm starting my fifth and I'm learning so much like with all the mob and design patterns I, I learn so much about crochet and all the different ways of linking in to create patterns so I'm really enjoying that it's sheer it's very uh it's very drapey and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe that when I rinse this or, or soak it and then pin it down to dry, it's probably going to get bigger as well. And with that, that catches you up on all of the work that I was working on for the Hobie Review yarn. There is one more yarn that I have yet to try out, and that is the BC Garn Soft Silk. I have some ideas to either brioche with it or try a slip stitch pattern, so I'm not too sure which one I'm going to to try it out but I'm very excited to start that one and I did get a call for dinner so I have to bid thee farewell enjoy the rest of your week it um, I have some more things to discuss but I'll save it for another video and yeah I look forward to seeing you soon bye for now